Peacock Alley for Royal Tea. This is actually something I have been looking forward to for a very long time, so I'm really excited that we finally get to try it. And this is here at the Waldorf Astoria Orlando, and this is actually $50 for an adult and $30 for a child. You can also add a glass of champagne to make it a grand royal tea. Each guest gets a little keepsake menu, and ours actually has our little name on here, the WDW couple. <laughs> So they're actually gonna bring a cart around of teas and then we'll have some tea sandwiches and then we'll have some desserts at the end. So we're really excited. The decor is super cute. Um, the glasses of the peacocks with the little spoons in there. I'm excited and there's some live music in the background. So it's gonna be wonderful. And just so you guys know, this is provided to us today by Waldorf Astoria. But aside from that, they took lighting into account for us, which is really cool. So we are sitting right here by this window. We got a nice uh, key light hitting us and it looks good. So I said all the decor is really cute, but let me be a little more specific. Our teacups are peacocks. Yeah, look. Oh my gosh. Life is the bubbles. <laughs> So I got some champagne and we actually just learned something right now. Whenever you actually pop a bottle of champagne, you actually shouldn't make a very loud sound. That's just something that they do for show and TV. So actually it's like about pressure. So whenever you're uncorking it, you just hold really good pressure and kind of just slowly wiggle it out of there. And it'll actually just kind of like hiss almost like with the bubbles and the carbonation basically inside. So it actually did not make a loud popping sound which was kind of nice because I wasn't scared when it opened. <laughs> good. good champagne, yes. We each picked our teas. I picked a health and wellness tea, and it's a green tea actually. And then they actually put a timer on the table. So when they bring your tea out and put it in the pot, and these are actually like tea leaves that they put into a little container. So this is all like good loose leaf tea. So they put it in the container, they put it in the pot, they stir it around, and then they let it steep for a little bit. And you get a little timer on your table. and. Mine, because it's a green tea and you don't want the leaves to like burn, um, you only want it to steep for about a minute and a half. So about half of the first three minute timer. And then Josh's is for about two and a half minutes. So that's almost all of the green on the three minute timer. So very interesting. I love this because this is such a like unique experience and different from any other tea that I have done before. So I'm enjoying this. So I told you what kind of tea I got, but I don't think I said it right. This is the organic health and well-being. It's basically just a light and refreshing green tea. I'm excited to try it. I did add a little bit of sugar to it because I do like my tea to be sweetened, so. And just how charming are these little glasses? I can't get over it. This really is light and refreshing. It actually almost has um, the flavor of like a black tea or like a English breakfast tea, which is a black tea, um, but it's much more light and not so dark and, you know, where you would could brew it for a really long time. This you just brew for a few, you steep it for a few minutes, not even, no, not even minute two minutes. We, we steeped this one for a minute and a half, um, but this is really good and you do still get that nice tea flavor in there. It's just very light, but it's good. So I chose to get a mountain berry tea. It's a ripe and fruity malang of superfood Saskatoon berries, red and black crowns, raisins, and wild blueberries. It smelled really good. So 
Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Normally I would do like a black tea, like Earl Grey or your like standard black tea, but uh, when we do stuff like this, I like to try something a little different. We did a tea at Grand Floridian and I chose to do something kind of different there. It's just like a, what you would think, like a mixed berry, uh, not juice, because it's not juice, but like kind of that mixed berry flavor just in the tea. It's good. It's sweet enough because the berries are already in it. You really don't need to add any sugar to this. Uh, and I didn't add any sugar to mine. And I think it's great. So along with our royal tea, we have our afternoon tea sandwiches, which include cucumber, which is shaved cucumber and pear and dill cream cheese, roasted turkey with dried cranberry cream cheese on carrot cake, black forest ham, whole grain mustard, cream cheese, and mikio peppers. And then there's a classic egg salad with herb mayonnaise and watercress. The Waldorf curry chicken with chicken apple salad, curry, caramelized walnuts, julienne apple on white bread, and smoked salmon with shallots, creme fraiche, and capers. The Waldorf curry chicken, that sandwich actually sounds like the Waldorf salad turned into a sandwich. So I'm interested to see how that comes out as a little tea sandwich. So I'm gonna try this egg salad. Uh, egg salad is probably like my favorite. I know I'm gonna enjoy it the most. Maybe I should save it for last. Well, you get two, cause I don't need it. That is awesome. I would like to get the recipe for how they make that so I can go home and make it myself. So you're probably used to like a normal egg salad has whole pieces of hard boiled egg in it. Um, this is very different. This is a pureed egg salad and it's very nice. Um, the pickle on top adds a little bit of like a soury kind of vinegar like taste to it because it's a pickle. And it balances really well with the herb mayo and it's not like super sweet. So it, it's a nice savory half a sandwich. Like what do you call that? A sandwich? Tea sandwich. Tea sandwich. Yeah, it's a nice half a tea sandwich. It's a nice tea sandwich. The pear is a nice touch in this cucumber sandwich. I really like that. And then the dill cream that's in there is not too overpowering. That's what I'm always worried about when there's dill in something. That is perfection. It's a very good cucumber sandwich, which I typically don't like, but I like that one. Ooh, this is like a nice smoked salmon in there. I normally don't like smoked salmon, but on this wheat bread with a little bit of tomato, that is really good. These first two tea sandwiches have been so light and like refreshing to go along with the tea. This is supposed to be like a light meal. This isn't supposed to be like heavy or dense or anything like that. It's a good start. This is the one I'm a little um, leery about, I guess, because I don't really like carrot cake, but it does smell really good. So I am going to give it a try. That is <laughs> surprisingly really good. The one I just tried is the roasted turkey with dried cranberry on carrot cake. I'm like really surprised. And let me just say, I haven't been told to say these things. I am giving my honest opinion about these sandwiches because I am very particular about tea sandwiches because when it comes to a sandwich, I'm very picky. I actually really like the carrot cake with this sandwich. Sometimes carrot cake can be like really dry or like really dense but this really isn't at all. It has a nice carrot flavor in there and you get a little bit of like some cinnamon in there, which actually goes great with this turkey. It kind of reminds you of like Thanksgiving in a tea sandwich. This is the Waldorf tea sandwich. There's a little bit of kick in there from the curry. It is really good, great flavor. There's a little bit of crunch in there from the grapes and the walnuts but I really like that. This one I have been saving for last because it's black forest ham and piquillo peppers and I love piquillo peppers, so I'm really excited. The piquillo peppers really make that sandwich. They just have such a great flavor. It's like something you really can't even describe and these peppers are not spicy at all. They are just, they're amazing. They're my favorite pepper, that's all I have to say. So I already tried the classic egg salad, which is great. I'm gonna start with this cucumber. The cucumber sandwich is nice. Obviously the cucumber makes it nice and light, but the pear adds this nice uh, little pop of sweetness in there. And then a little bit of savoriness with the dill cream cheese. It's good, not what I expected. Roasted turkey is one that I'm really looking forward to, uh, mainly because I love carrot cake and 
I don't know. We'll see what it tastes like. Mmm. Taylor described that perfectly. It is like a little bite of Thanksgiving dinner in your mouth. Dried cranberry sauce in there adds a little bit of sweetness along with the carrot cake. And then you get the savoriness from the turkey. Very good, well balanced. This one, this this Black Forest ham is one that I was looking forward to as well because um, I like the piquillo peppers as well. It has almost that, like that spicy smell to it, but it's not. That is right up top with the egg salad. I don't even know how to describe it. It's so good. You have that nice, almost um, like pepper taste, but you don't get any of the heat from it. It's balanced really well with the cream cheese and the ham. All right, Waldorf curry chicken. This one here I think is, uh, it's good. I'm not really getting the taste of like the walnuts in there. There's a little bit of sweetness in there. I'm assuming from like the apple, but it's actually a little bit spicy. There's almost a little bit of heat in the back of my throat. And uh, you know, the one thing about making these and for such a small portion sometimes, you might not get uh, always everything that's in there, but it's okay. I mean, it's still good. I like it. And last uh, and not, but not least is the smoked salmon, shallots, cam fresh, and capers. Looks very good. Reminds me of like a, a savory donut with that smoked salmon, the creme fresh, the capers, the shallots all mixed together. It's very good. All right, so we have finished our tea sandwiches and we are now on to the scones. These are a house-made golden raisin scone and then it also comes with an apricot jam, clotted cream, and lemon curd as like a side so you can put on your... So for dessert, we have a raspberry macaron, a red velvet cake, a fruit tart, a pistachio cream puff, and then a chocolate cream basically so dessert was pretty good you guys know that i am not a huge dessert fan by any means so for me it was slim pickings as far as eating everything now with that being said i did try everything and nothing was like misprepared or anything like that it's just i'm not big into sweets but there's one thing that i had to pick from the whole tray it would have been the raspberry macaron just because those cookies are never like overly sweet to me for some reason. I don't know why it is. Um, I like the texture of them. I like that um, they have like that nice, uh, like almost like a cream on the inside. And then the cookie though is not hard or crunchy. And it's good. And the raspberry flavoring was was done well too. So as a little, um, a little bit sour, like you would get with eating raspberries, which was nice, but it wasn't too much. So it was good. So I thought that was a really good selection of desserts. It was a wide variety of different types of like pastry and cookie and cake. Um, I really enjoyed that. My favorite was probably the same as Josh. I really liked the raspberry macaron. However, I really liked the chocolate cream as well. And it had like a cherry and chocolate like black forest cake on the bottom. Um, but that cream, it was almost kind of like a mousse. It was nice and light and airy really good. So we just finished eating Royal Tea here in the Peacock Alley area and it was good. It was different. Yes, it was a little unique compared to other teas that we have had. Well, I've had more than Josh, but I thought that there were some unique experiences, especially with the little timer and how they brought the cart around with the loose leaf tea. I thought yeah. that was really cool. It was good. Overall, I think you might be thinking like, oh, these are like really small portions and everything. But again, it's something where like you eat so much yeah. and then you get full. Like I, basically when they brought out the, the tray of desserts, like I almost mm -hmm. couldn't even eat them because I was so <laughs> there full. Was, yeah, it um, was a lot of small portions of food. It was. So just so you are aware, royalty is from 2 to 4 p.m. on Sundays here in mm -hmm. Peacock Alley. And you do have to have a reservation at least 24 hours in advance. And you can come to the front desk or call either way and make your reservation. I'd highly recommend you come check it out though. This is yeah. a unique experience, not something you can get everywhere. And I always love a good little tea. And even though that it's down here in Peacock Alley, which is kind of like the bar lounge area, it's still yeah. like elegant. Um, yeah. Just from the table setting and kind of how it's all presented, it's nice. Yeah, so. and it wasn't super loud here either, just being like off the lobby area and near the elevators. I think yeah. for it being on a Sunday afternoon, everybody's like having a lot of downtime. Not it's a chill. lot of people like hanging out in the lobby area. So yeah, it was yeah. really nice. 
So let us know if you have ever had royalty here at Peacock Alley and let us know if you plan on trying it.